The following program paid for by Rosenberg Financial Group. Providing live finance advice since 1993. It's time for your money with Steve Rosenberg, Sherry Goss, Randy Goss, and Becca Wilton. To participate in today's program, call 478-742-0940 with your financial questions and comments. And now, live from the making studios of News Talk 940 WMAC, it's your money. Good, Good morning, morning Middle Georgia. Georgia. <laughs> hey, Randy and Sherry Goss are here. Oh, yeah, there's something just happened. Oh, we okay? Y'all good? A little technical difficulty right off the bat, but uh, <laughs> anyway, you're listening to Your Money with Randy and Sherry, as you already know, and uh, we've been on the, the radio now what 30 years, roughly. So we haven't been. No, Steve not you. Was. But the firm. <laughs> but anyway, um, we ha- we are Rosenberg Financial Group. We have offices in Macon and Warner Robins, and if you'd like to come in for a no cost consultation, please just give us a call at four seven eight. Nine two two eighty one hundred. We seriously do not charge you anything, and we do not try to sell you anything, and we do not try to push what we do on you. And we do not chase you across the parking lot, as we've said many times. <laughs> anyway, um, the calls today are uh, to get here to be on the show with us live is seven four two zero nine forty. That's four seven eight seven four two zero nine forty. And if you'd like to know more about us, go to our website retirerelax.com and um, there's a bunch of special reports out there ranging uh, you know from can you afford to retire to internet security. So and I meet people every week, people that are new that come to me that just want some advice. They saw me on channel thirteen and so they come and they bring all their stuff and we go through it and see, you know, can they afford to retire and all that kind of thing. It's fun it's fun conversations. Most of the time. Right. <laughs> uh, there's a few outliers. It's like, okay, you're going to have to keep working a couple of years. So, but whatever. Yeah. And, and the nice thing is, you know, it is a free consultation. So you can come in. Uh, everything you tell us is uh, confidential. We don't repeat it. We put notes in our computer system on what we talked about for compliance reasons. And, and uh, it just might help you see where you need to go for your own retirement. And if you'd like to come over to us as a client, then that's that's an added uh, benefit for us and you, I, be- I do believe. So um, give us a call uh, or look us up on the website. And like I said, there's a bunch of special reports out there. But when you go to our website, uh, the first thing that will pop up is a box to put your name and your email in. And that's just so we can send out periodic uh, updates that that uh, we I think we send them out every two weeks and they just come into your email and we get lots of very positive feedback on those it's so, just financial information yep. and, and it's, it's not to help you it's not a sales pitch so anyway let's see here Sherry we had a good week in the market it's uh, the S&P topped uh, the 4,000 mark for the first time it actually <laughs> closed Friday at 4,019 and the Dow closed at 33,153 it's just a couple of months ago it was at 30,000 so it's doing very well uh, the micro shares, Microsoft shares rose 1.2 percent. Uh, Which, news. as a disclosure, that is in our portfolio. That is in our portfolio, and uh, and that's news on the software giant will deliver uh, new virtual reality glasses to to uh, the U.S. Army. And hmm. wait a minute, back up. Yeah. So they've got a giant contract with the government. That's right. I wonder how much that was. It was uh, 21.9 billion dollars. Billion. Over 10 years. Wow. So when you break Good it down, it's really not that much. It's just budget dust, you know? So <laughs> Good for them. Okay. Anyway, it, and a lot of this, this, this uh, movement you see in the markets right now is because of the Biden stimulus, you know, right? phase one, two, three, and we don't know how far it's going to go beyond that. Um, but um, it's everything is moving in the positive direction. We're going to cover a lot of this in the show today from, you know, the, the jobless reports. Uh, that are coming out somewhat mixed, I guess. You had first-time unemployment that went up about 719,000. Makes no sense. And um, so that's, that's that was kind of a negative thing. And a lot of the positive things are just the fact that the economy is reopening. Uh, people are getting back to work. and Georgia's they, opening on the 8th. Yeah, and Georgia was the second state in, in uh, that had the, the most jobs I think it's behind Kentucky who had the most jobs put back on the books this this last uh, month, well, good. Wh- which is good. So anyway, th- on the negative side of that, which is should be causing everyone a little bit of concern, is that you know with this giant infrastructure bill, and then next thing is going to be the education bill that's coming out, and then well, the student health, loan forgiveness, student loan forgiveness, and then the health care 
um, bill that they're pushing out. The big thing that you need to be concerned about there is the inflation that's going to come with all this. Yes. And so that's our biggest concern with is. all this government spending. How do they keep interest rates near zero and then have every the cost of everything going up because everybody's going to start spending money. And as everybody who's been on lockdown for a year goes out and starts shopping and driving and planning trips and going um, and booking cruises. <clears throat> And eating that, out, that's right. the price of everything is going. It has to go up. They cannot that's hold right. that down. And you know the market is priced in the good news. <clears throat> you know, like the infrastructure spending bill that <clears throat> that priced that into the market. I just don't think they're necessarily priced in the negatives, which is the inflation. So we just have to keep our eye on that as we move forward. And, and where that matters in our portfolios is the bond funds. Yes, because when interest rates go up, bond values go down. And so if you are in a pile of bond funds. You need to call your advisor and pay attention to this because eventually they will decline in value and you're going to want to be out of those, which is what we will have to do. That's right. And if you don't have a financial advisor who looks at the, at your portfolio on a daily basis, basically, uh, you might want to reconsider and, and maybe just come visit us and find out what we do. Okay. All right. Um, let's see, Sherry, there was a great article that came out this week. It was very I'll say comforting for some of the thousands of vets who are affected by the burn pits, which oh, we've talked yeah. about before. Uh, but it's a sweeping measure that was introduced in the Senate Friday that could open up health care and disability compensation to a huge swath of veterans, which were made sick by the burn pits. And the so other explain a burn pit. Explain okay. to people that aren't familiar with this what this is. All right. In, in the middle, our daughter and her husband were both in Afghanistan in a stinking burn pit base right well a burn pit basically is a giant hole that's been dug in the ground and they throw everything in it from jet fuel to human waste okay and then they to light it on fire waste, to chemicals and what it is is that you have a military operation goes into theater x and they don't have infrastructure just like out in the desert in afghanistan and, and different places that we have put these burn pits in and in order to get rid of all the refuse they dig the burn pits and they light them on fire how big are the burn pits uh there's one that i know of that was uh 10 acres and that's huge that's very large and think about the amount of garbage that can go into 10 acres and the size of the fire and the fumes and, and everything burning that comes it off. weekly that's right weekly our daughter when she was in afghanistan we would skype and she would complain about how dirty it was there she's like i can't get clean and the burn pit stinks so bad because they have to burn it off every week to get rid of all the trash and the human waste that's right you're burning human waste and jet fuel and you're inhaling this yep and they don't give anybody respirators. There's no masks. Deal with this. So Zero. You're, you're not just it's living. Criminal. You're not just living in it. You're sleeping in it. You're conducting your daily operations there until you. You're, basically, the only fresh air you get uh, is when you go outside the the wire into the the. Where you're the, not supposed the, to the be. The unfriendly zone. No, you. Yeah, when you're in the in the military, you have to go into the unfriendly zones quite often, mm -hmm. and you know. But there's think about the people who never get to go out. You know, the people who are working like maybe finance or services, and they and they're stuck there all day long, and they don't have the opportunity to get outside the fence. But anyway, you know, this is this is a lot like the way they've been treated. The veterans have been treated in this these ongoing wars in the Middle East is just like the Vietnam veterans yep. were treated you know, with Agent Orange and it took them decades to get any traction so that uh, the Agent Orange exposure could be treated and as a presumptive still modifying disability. It. That's right. They're still modifying it as the people that expo were exposed were denied claims That's all right. these years and so finally certain people and now they're in their 70s finally getting a fin claim. Finally. And they're going through all kinds of horrific uh, abnormalities cancers you know oh, just, you name huge. it but anyway the va estimates that there's about 3.5 million veterans that have been exposed to the burn pits and that came out of a 2015 report and it seems to me though that they would know exactly how many people right? were they do know how many exactly they're just not wanting to, to come off that information i'm sick of these people <laughs> anyway <laughs> um you know the va main always maintains that the science is not clear but when you have you know, as many people who have health problems and the only people who are having these health problems are the people who were exposed to the burn pit. Uh, I think it's, I think it's criminal that they don't let the veterans get the the, right. the health care covered that so they let me, deserve. Let me give you a case example. So we had an employee a few years ago. We lost two employees. We hired an employee, and her husband was frequently he was for um, weapons purchases. So he was in and out of Afghanistan all the time. Um, he was he had about twenty years in. And when she left our employment because of the stress, she couldn't take it working for us right, yeah. because it was just too much. Um, 
he had been to the doctor and they were medically discharging him because of the burn pit exposure. His basically his entire sinus cavity was burned out. Burned out. His sinuses all the way and they said you will have lung cancer. That is what you're going to have next. We're medically retiring you because we cannot fix your sinus cavity. It's completely destroyed from you bur- you breathing so much of the burn pits. Well, until they until they formally recognize the burn pits he will have a hard time getting the the disability that he deserves for being there and then getting the sick that's the problem but the difference in the vietnam era and this era and the veterans who are being exposed now versus the the agent orange veterans is that uh, we have much more uh we have a larger ability to put news out there and to to get a lot of exposure to the problem through social media through just emails to congressmen and senators and stuff so uh there, there's a big push on capitol hill this year they, they knew about it last year they chose not to do anything but this year it appears that there's a lot of of the politicians who are on board with getting the presumptive disability put into effect and the other thing that might uh help is that joe biden's son uh actually went to Afghanistan with the Delaware Army National Guard and ended up with brain, uh, brain cancer in 2015 due to the burn pits in Iraq. So, uh, and that was at Balad Air Base. So anyway, uh, this is, it's, it's sad news, but it is good news for the veterans, at least that, that this is on the horizon. So hang in there, veterans. So I just have to, li- so they have a list of what they believe is related to the burn pits. Asthma, head cancer, neck cancer, respiratory cancer, gastrointestinal cancer, reproductive cancer, lymphoma, kidney cancer, brain cancer, melanoma, chronic bronchitis, obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, bronchiolitis, emphysema, uh, lung disease. I mean, like, good. And, and, and the list goes on. And it's, these are not. And they're still using them. Yeah, these are not. They're still using the right. burn pits. That's right. But the, the list goes on. But. Uh, the thing you should notice out of that list, though, is there's not one in there that's just a hangnail. You know, these are serious, serious, serious items. And, for, and it's just so our son-in-law was lighting the burn pits in Afghanistan because he was the lowest ranking right. dude. And he had no mask or nothing. And they had him in the middle of this thing lighting them. Yep. They would just have to wrap a bandana around their face. Anyway. Anyway, sorry. All right. Sherry, let's talk about some lockdown habits. I think you've got a, a good question for everybody. Yeah, so here's my question for everybody out there. And I'm sorry I get so mad about these burn pits, but I just feel it's so criminal. And I get as mad as Agent Orange and um, it just upsets me terribly. Anyway, so I'm going to switch gears here. So my clients who've been on lockdown for the last year are getting their vaccinations. They're coming in for reviews. They're going out to eat. They're going shopping. They're talking about trips. But my question is, how has your behavior changed? Which habits are here to stay? If you've been on lockdown, I have clients that literally were in their house for a year with three cats or a dog. I mean, they literally stayed in their house. They didn't go anywhere. They didn't drive anywhere. Everything was delivered to the front door. And so the first thing I've noticed is the delivery is here to stay. That's right. They're not going to go shopping. They're, they're so used to being able to just order online and everything coming to them. I don't see that shutting down at and, all. And I think this is going to really be the death nail for, for retail, unless people just want to get out now and go shopping. Uh, people have become enamored with what they can find online now. Yeah, and, it's so much easier and simpler. The only problem I hear is people complain that they can't try anything on. Yeah. So as of the 8th, that should be going away too with Kemp's order. Um, so you can actually go to a store and try on. I had a client in this week and she's bought some clothes. She couldn't try them on so she brings them home and then they told her that they would stretch out or something and now they're like two sizes too big and she can't take them it's just like the clothing buying clothes is well they should eat more just fill up those pants (laughs) (laughs) but i have people that are cooking more i have people that have done tons of yard work oh yeah huge yard work um online ordering they call their friends they they have a network but now you're going to be able to go back to church Finally, so you don't have right. to just call people. You actually see them in person. I know my mom. Basically, she goes to church and, and does yard work. Yes. You know, luckily, she's got seven acres, so she can stay busy. So what are your plans? What are you going to do different? Are you going to start booking flights, cruises, or are you going to stay home for a while? I have people that are on both sides. Some are, like, ready to go on a trip, and some are like, ah, eh, not so much. 
because they're still concerned about the well for us one of the habits that we started you know uh, we got guitars for christmas and we are practicing guitars every day that's a habit then we we did that because we were really trying to be good about not going out to eat all the time that was another habit that we're doing better at we're cooking more at home and practicing our guitars we do meal prep really good yeah we do we do meal prep usually thursday night and not meal prep planning we plan all our food thursday night i go to the grocery store we cook everything on the weekend and that's what we take to work and we eat from that pile all week long which just as easier yep it's simple and easier and i know what i'm eating and i made it myself and i don't have to guess what's in it oh you made an egg salad this morning just for the listeners with, oh my gosh with, it's with, really with, good with wasabi in it sriracha no sriracha sriracha egg salad it's supposed to have bacon in it i didn't make any bacon but it is a loaded egg salad recipe it with is amazing fat free greek yogurt it's unbelievable right anyway, that's those are the things that have uh <laughs> <laughs> basically gotten our attention during the covid and if you've got something else that that, that uh a habit that you have that you've formed done. that is positive yep. call and spread it around 478-7420-940 so the other thing i learned from a client last week is he downloaded the red cross donation app <laughs> and so it's really easy to download on your phone and it's extremely easy to schedule a donation so that you pick where you want to go and you show up there and hope it goes all right well <laughs> you went and had that done and you were going to get an antibody out of right. the test out of this right so so mine didn't go so well i had the new guy that couldn't quite get the needle in my vein right and it took three people trying to stick this vein this needle in my vein and the blood wouldn't come out and so i ended up leaving with the bag of cheez it's <laughs> <laughs> that was my prize your prize for putting going through being stabbed by three people with and yeah. with a needle <laughs> well, yeah and, and when you came back you were not a happy person well i wanted the antibody thing right i wanted the report i'm not going to get the report because i didn't actually donate and i said so what happens to that blood it didn't even make a whole bag is this what happens then she goes oh they'll use it for um research like on different drugs and things they can still use the blood it's not going to go in the trash can i said well that's good after what i went through for an hour being poked but listen <laughs> listen everybody um we we laugh at instances like this in yes. our household okay um no, i'm I do, not complaining i, I do en- happens yeah i do encourage you to support the red cross and donate blood uh it's always a good thing to do i have a friend who de- donates blood i think it's every 56 days yeah, every and, two months i think they told me yeah and, but he, get, on the app, it'll tell you when you're eligible again. I'm going to go back and use the other vein. But it's a good thing to do, folks. <laughs> anyway, Sherry. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So we went out to dinner. Our neighbors told us about this new restaurant on College Street. If you're a Maconite, Y-O-L-L-A-H, 894 College Street. It was packed. When did we go? Thursday night? Thursday night unbelievable mexican food i've never seen anything like it anywhere and, around and here I, and i'll say it's more spanish than mexican yes because they have uh we ended up getting uh well southern spanish because we got fried pork skins as one of our appetizers they and, were really good i'm were, sorry to tell you yeah they were amazing <laughs> really and, bad for you really and, bad for you and uh they were nice and spicy which is just how we like them and then we got a a a appetizer of calamari now both of huge they they this these are appetizers but you can probably have four people eating the appetizer and then we got a plate of paella which was really pretty good i mean it was it was more along the lines of what we ate while we were in spain you know all the it looks like you left your plate of rice on the beach and all the sea creatures climbed up inside it you know that's about what it's like so shrimp and uh scallops and you know you know some plate some people put a little bit of uh uh, squid in it. We, I don't think there was squid in this mm-hmm. one, but it was good. It was very, very good. So but I I'm really impressed with the restaurant, and they've only been open a month, and they were packed. And it's on College Street, so it's not right downtown, uh, and they have ample parking in the back, so I encourage you to look them up and pay them a visit. You'll enjoy Y-O-L-L-A-H, it. Y-O-L-L-A-H, Yola. Two ladies are running it. Very nice people. All right, so I met with a client. I've talked about this person before. Her husband was very sick for two years and passed away six months ago and so she's going through the learning curve still of everything that she has to be responsible for now and it's been he prepared her for two years and still even then the last six months has been such a learning curve she did her own taxes on TurboTax she'd never done that before and she got through it but on top of all of this 
somehow somebody stole her identity oh, and man. she had to go do blocks on her three credit reporting firms she had to she had to go through i mean making sure that his identity was shut down as far as his credit reports i mean now sending the death certificate into experian equifax etc so that nobody could steal his identity and go get credit on his name, which is something everybody needs to make sure that you do. When somebody passes, you've got to shut down their credit file because this is one of the biggest identity theft scams of all time, a deceased person. And we've talked a lot in the, in the past about you know freezing your credit and stuff like that, but we I don't think either one of us had really ever thought through you know when someone passes the, I the liability that's hanging out there. Last September, I saw a guy whose wife after she died they hacked into her credit and applied for credit cards in her name and he found it, it was just a nightmare and this goes to something else that we talked about several times again uh, when a person in your family passes be careful what you put in the obituary yes uh, because if you're put in there your address you know and this kid survived you're just providing these these uh, these thieves the ability to have more information for on you so they like can where you were born yeah like you can go apply for credit in their name it's amazing what people put in the obituary so be very careful what you put in those yeah I just I thought the funeral homes need to shut down the credit of these people I was thinking that yesterday they should be yep. doing this as part of their service they could even charge for it I wouldn't even care a hundred dollars right I mean, whatever it takes to shut it down and send death certificates to all three right. credit bureaus i'm going to email i'm going to email um a funeral home the one that we're going to mccullough oh mccullough yeah yeah i'm going to i'm going to email them and tell them this would be a really great service they could provide but we were talking about it uh about she's a lot younger than me and she said that she has a friend that she talks to who lost she her friend lost her husband a couple of years ago and she was talking about how people are telling her that she should get out there and and start dating again and she's like you got to be kidding me i'm never getting married again and i have no interest in dating anybody it's i'm the same way mm -hmm. there's no way right period um but it's just it's a huge shift it's a, a really tough thing to go through and then she's going through how to remember him and things in the house and special things that she's keeping that remind her of him um it's just a lot it's a big adjustment so if you have anybody in your family that's gone through a loss you need to give them a little space and and let them just talk uh because it's it's just so huge anyways yep so last week we had a phone call about covid19 funeral assistance and this is from FEMA. So they don't have the guidance out yet, but they are going to pay, according to this article, up to $7,500 to any family who lost a family member to COVID. And so as more information comes out about this, I will bring it to the radio show. Uh, but I'm no point in really talking about it yet because it's there's nothing you can do about it. So I'll hang on to that for later. All right. What you got? I can't read. Uh, I can't read what you're okay. trying to tell me. Okay, never mind. Uh, let's move on to uh, this uh, step up in cost basis. Yeah. So. Hey. CK. Hello. Is the phone ringing? Yep. Good, good morning. Good morning. You're on the air with Randy and Sherry. Good morning. Good. Hey, this is Catherine. I was wondering if y'all had talked about. Um, something in the news lately with the possible tax changes that might be coming down the pike um, for capital gains right yeah so a group of Senate De Senate Democrats issued a proposal Monday to tax unrealized unrealized capital gains of wealthy estates at death this is insane are you agreeing yes very much I concerned with what this might mean for um, young people or people that haven't yet gotten to the point where they're really thinking about tax impact. Um, what do you think about the step up in basis? Do you think that's likely to happen? I kind of wonder, they've tried it a few times, and I wonder if it's actually going to come to fruition maybe under Joe Biden. So let me explain this to people that aren't familiar with it. So my dad passed away about six years ago, and he had a farm, and he had a lake house, and he had a what? Oh, yeah. Um, so the lake house, uh, we put on the market. Nobody wanted it. It was in Idaho. I'm not going to use a lake house in Idaho. So we put it on the market, and it sold really fast. And because 
it was inherited property we got the step up in cost basis to the date of death value and we each got a check for about a hundred grand and none of us paid tax on any of that that's what this is about uh, his farm sold last year we each got another check we paid no taxes on it because a step up in cost basis to date of death value the property had not appreciated in value since he passed we have one more chunk of property that should go um, it's going to be under a million dollars so it won't be affected by this but you, people think a million dollars sounds like a lot of money. If you have a piece of property and you just sit on it for a very long time, it is not hard to have a million dollar property. That's right. And they're talking about taxing it on unrealized gains, though, at a state's, I mean. Well, it's not just like uh, um, an asset like stocks, okay? But if, if you have a, a business and it transfers to someone else and they say, that you are going to have to pay the, the step up in cost basis on that business. It may be way more than the business even has money in there. I mean, right. the you don't value have the cash laying around. The value of the business is one thing. Cash on hand is a different business. So right. what do you think about that? Yeah, that is an impact. And then the, um, also the net investment income tax, too. I mean, the, it might change to ordinary rates, and then you get this other tax slapped on top of it as well. Um, there, there are a few tax strategies that I know of that you can work around it. Like what? The biggest, well, like holding it as your principal residence and actually living there. Mm -hmm. If you inherited mm -hmm. a house or something, you can get out of some of the tax that way. And possibly, but one thing that I thought about was keeping good documentation. Because if you do get that, um, the decedent, basically, whoever you inherit it from, if you get their basis and they've upgraded their kitchen or they've made some home renovations that, you don't know about your basis could actually be higher and and that's a good so, point yeah the best thing is to keep really good records in case something like this happens i'm not sure if it all will come to fruition but it's um definitely something to plan for and talk to your financial advisor ahead of time to get ahead of this stuff yeah this is crazy so this is just yeah. a this is just this like we were talking about earlier there's a lot of things that are going on in the market right now uh and a lot of them are happening right in in uh in our capital and so here's what's insane so it's called the, <laughs> the sensible taxation and equity promotion step, step. act to but, eliminate stepped up basis at death yep I've, but, people that don't have assets don't understand but, how bad this is. Right, and the, uh, what I was getting to is the people in Washington D.C. A lot of them who are pushing this, is like the Bernie Sanders, the Elizabeth Warrens, the AOCs, uh, these are people who have never created anything on their own. They have no idea what it takes to run a business. To what what they are proposing is going to do to even the middle class. You know, well, the four hundred thousand dollar limit that they say that taxes won't increase for people making less than four hundred thousand. That's not quite true. If like you said, if you receive this kind of inheritance, it, it, that would include that, anybody. That's true. Yes, and, and anybody. So, so that makes their net net value go up, right? Therefore, right. therefore they get taxed and, and viewed differently. So I haven't seen anywhere that spouses are not included in this. Because right now, a spouse can inherit like an IRA. <clears throat> so if you pass away, you're, you're married, you have an IRA with a million dollars in it which is not uncommon. That's not just rich people. That's normal, hardworking people that save right. really well. So your spouse has a million dollars. Right now, if that spouse passes away and you're the beneficiary, that IRA becomes yours as if it always was. I wonder if they're trying to do anything with that. Have you seen anything with that? I, I haven't seen anything on that Good. quite yet, but that, um, who knows? Unrealized gains being taxed, who knows? I know, this is like open season on people that have money. It, it's one, ridiculous. Good, one good one positive thing is the gift tax did the yes life and exclusion it did increase this year to 11.7 million so that's that's still good right um 15,000 a year stayed the same and, but and, and how long do you think it's going to be before they come after that number who six months six time. months <laughs> yeah. so you know when, what we're talking about here are things that require every citizen to be actively engaged with their their representatives their congressmen you know if you don't have their 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 contact information email our office i'll send you a file with everyone's contact information just blast them an email they're you've not going to come you've at you fight down. this thing this you is do. very bad this isn't good for anybody it's a total money grab on people who've worked hard and built something it's completely wrong yep anyways yep. thanks for the call appreciate yep. you have a great hey, day. Hey, you got anything else you want to add while you're on the phone? Oh, 
Well, one other thing that I thought was, that I don't know if y'all covered it yet, but the 15%, most people are in that that long-term capital gains 15% bracket. Just keep in your mind, would you rather pay 15% or in the 20s or possibly 30 You know, that's the difference. Are you talking about if long-term versus things, short-term capital gains? Right, and if things are taxed at your okay. ordinary rate versus that long-term, just those numbers are good to keep in mind to quant- just do a rough and dirty and see how could this impact me personally? Okay, good, perfect. Excellent. Thank you. Well, which is a good segue cons- considering we had oh, yeah. an article on that. Let me back up one second okay. here. So, Thanks for the call. Yeah, that was great. So so if they do away with the stepped-up basis at death, you could start gifting. And you mm-hmm. could start gifting, uh, like she said, $15,000 a year without having to claim it on your tax return. Anything over that amount, you have to just claim it on your tax return, but you don't pay taxes on it and the person that you gift it to doesn't pay any taxes either it just has to be filed with the irs so they understand that money is moving and why um so you could if they if they really do this stepped up basis at death uh oh to i'm sorry eliminate if they eliminate the stepped up basis at death you could go ahead and start gifting to people the problem the problem is they change the laws and then somebody else gets elected and they change it back and it makes it really hard to know what to do That's because right. you have no idea. Because if you if you gift a house to somebody, that person gets the basis of what you paid for that house. They get no stepped up basis. If you die right now and your house goes to that person, it gets stepped up in cost basis to date of death value. So the person can turn around like we did with dad's lake house, turn around and sell it and pay no taxes. It's, it's a no win. I mean, it's right. really hard. This is this is ridiculous, and it's I can't believe we're even in this place. Where it's like we're in in Sanityville. Well, uh, we have a big push in America right now where people want something for nothing. They they don't the, with this all the stimulus spending that's been going on, um, and the we're creating entitlement programs in America, and that concerns me. And to pay for entitlements, you have to have higher taxes, and they're going to start taxing the people that. Um, there's, right now, they say the the highest net worth earners out there, but the, even all of those people, they cannot pay. That does not cover the expenses for what they're wanting to to constantly be pushing out to the public. And you know, once they get, once they tap into all the money from those the high net worth worth earners, the next people in line are you and me. Right. You don't have to be that. I mean, talk to a farmer. That's Talk right. to somebody that has a bunch of timber land. Talk to somebody that has business that they built. I mean, this is, you're not talking about people that are extra wealthy. This is like an, an average person that actually owns a business mm-hmm. that could have a, a business worth a million that's right. dollars. Yep. So that's the problem. And I have a client. I've been thinking about them. Um, so they own a business. Uh, their son is working on taking it over. It's worth $12 million. This is in Warner Robins, Georgia. Yep. And they just make stuff that the government buys from them. Yep. Like a lot of companies in Warner Robins do. And their own sweat equity is how they built it. Yes. Through their own brains and smarts and hard work and hours and hours of labor. So they've created this thing. And so I've been thinking that it needs to be um, transferred to the sun shares per share per year like so many shares a year that they transfer he cannot inherit this well i've been thinking the same thing about pitman automotive because preston and i own this together uh i own 51 percent. he owns 49 and i've been thinking the same thing about you know shifting shares to him shifting shares to him because inheriting it i mean it could be a taxable event the way these idiots are going (laughs) right right you're right and i'm trying to remember if your property, like Catherine, oops, sorry, the caller that called in, <laughs> I know who she is, so sorry. Um, she was talking about if you inherit property, then you could live in it for a few years and then turn around and sell it, just like we're doing with the loft. We've lived there for six years. It's a pre- it's appreciated in value. We can sell it and not pay any taxes right. on it, even though we're going to make a profit because it was our primary residence. And that's what she was mentioning previously. I don't know if people caught that. But that's that's a huge deal. But if you already own a home, you know that other the, the house you just received. Let's assume you've not lived in your current resident residence 
Is it three out of five years or two out of five years? I think it's three out of five. And um, if you haven't lived there the three out of the five years, then you still need to stay in that house so you don't get possible capital gains when you sell that one. Right. Uh, or So then you go claiming the other house as your primary residence. And right. how long do you have to hold three to five years again? Three. But, but what if you're... What if you're if you're trying to just sell the home and you know get it out from underneath you know your your care basically so then the the things that I've read is they want us to uh, start taxing that at forty five percent right so every, forty five cents of every dollar you get in this situation would go towards taxes it's just rotten yep anyway Anyways, enough of that you're at the halfway point so everybody you're listening to uh, your money with randy and sherry goss uh, we are fee-based financial planners out of macon and warner robbins uh, we have uh, we have many many great uh, people working on our staff right now it's a wonderful place to be and if you're in need of a new financial advisor please give us a call at 478-922-8100 uh, we can go over everything that you want to talk about as it pertains to your retirement. And uh, that's about it. Good. What else you got, Sherry? RetireRelax.com is the website. So long-term versus short-term capital gains. So let's say you buy stock. Well, here's here's really where this is hitting me in the head. Our son has become uh, one of the day trader people on his phone. And it's very interesting to me that he's reading all these textbooks about the stock market and understanding how things work. That's right. And he, I couldn't get him to, in high school. I couldn't get him to read a book to save my life. I mean, he could, <laughs> That's now, true. He's a mechanic and he can read books on mechanic work. And he's like, why am I able to read a book about the car, like car parts, but I can't read literature. Right. It's because you don't, you're not interested. It doesn't interest you, and so your brain just can't connect to it. So now he's gotten into this thing that he's doing on his phone right. when, with an app. When Reddit came about, he he just immersed himself in it, and he was reading everything that was coming out on the chats. He gets up every morning now and reads stuff out of the Wall Street Journal. He's I mean, he is, I've never seen anything like it. And it's been a quick turn too. It has yeah, it, like in thirty days, all of a sudden he's like, he's got all this information. And right. He's calling you all the time, telling you all the stuff that he's learning about the stock market. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but you know that that's great. But you know everyone needs to understand that that you, know, you got to be careful when you get out there. This is you don't want to invest anything. For like in these these guys who are trying to you know use the shorts and everything, it, it just got to be very careful. Be you do very not, careful. Do not want to give away your money that that should be used for your retirement. You know? Right. So here's the deal: short term capital gains, long term capital gains. They are taxed at very different rates. So uh, let's say you're single. Actually, I'll use him. Married, filing joint. Long term capital gains. Uh, Oh, this didn't print out right. Up zero percent. Oh, yeah, here we have zero percent rate up to eighty thousand dollars is taxed at zero if you're married filing joint. But that's long term. That's an asset that you've held for more than a year. Uh, short term for married filing joint is taxed at ten percent up to twenty thousand. And so if you're doing this online trading and, and these quick trading and, and buying and selling and buying and selling and buying and selling, that is all short-term capital gains that's going to flow through to your tax return next year. And you need to be withholding money or you need to be setting aside money. And if you're uh, married filing joint, short-term capital gains up to 20000 roughly is 10%. Then the next 80000 is 12%. Then the next 171,000 is 22%. So this is all of your income combined, plus what you're making on the side if you're doing this quick trading stuff. Um, don't don't cut yourself short and end up going into next year owing a bunch of money to the IRS That's right. and not having the cash to pay it. And worse than that is don't go in with the attitude, and I, and I know a couple of people that are like this, that... I'm not, not gonna, me. I'm not going to file me either. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to file taxes. They'll never know. It's like, oh. well, well, hang on a second. To open the account, you had to put all your personal information in there. It's all reported and they're to all the IRS. Be reporting to the IRS. So if you think that's the case, then you're deluding yourself. Uh, just understand the tax rates. Look it up on the internet. Open a savings account. Start setting money aside. If you're not having tax withheld on things that you're doing online and selling and buying stuff, and this could be anything from. Uh, 
gosh, you could be reselling stuff from Amazon. I don't care what it is that you're making money on. Mm -hmm. You've got to be wise about this and keep really good records yeah. so that you know what you owe and what's correct. Because that's the other thing. Uh, hopefully, these apps that people are using to do this day trading will give them a good 1099 at the end of the year and show them exactly what they owe. I'm certain that they do I'm because they regula do. regulators mm -hmm. would have to. But if you're doing other stuff on the side, uh, just really keep good books and records. If you're self-employed or you're doing a side gig, it's it all matters. Right. We well, you know, uh, Sherry, the White House unveiled this $2 trillion infrastructure and climate, and climate plan. plan. And climate plan. Um, they're going to wow. save the world. They're going to save the world. That's right. Uh, anyway, this this new proposal does they they do everything from from the climate to infrastructure to um, electricity ele grids. Yes, and capping hundreds of oil wells. So there. This is what caught me about this article when they they laid out the plan is that they are they're supposed to be creating jobs. This is trillions of dollars being spent to do all these wonderful things that they want to do but yet they say here they're going to hire hundreds of thousands of electricians and laborers to lay miles of electrical grid and capping hundreds of oil wells why is your phone going off i don't know <laughs> anyway anyway focus sorry all right it is i thought i'd cut that thing off my apologies everybody but anyway um yeah it's called the american jobs plan yeah the it, america's you're going to lose your jobs plan <laughs> no, you know, I, I really do. Uh, there's a lot of things that need to get done in America. I do agree with the infrastructure, uh, but I don't agree with all the other pork that they stick in, stuck in this one, as well as any other time through any president where they just fill it up with a bunch of stuff. That's the, 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 the laundry list of wishes. So well, it sounds good. So every lead pipe in the country would be replaced. How many lead pipes are there? Well, you think about large cities, there's probably a lot. Josh, turn I'm, your phone off. I did. <laughs> no, I, there it is. Okay. Uh, but they, I thought lead pipes were done already. No, 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 no. They're, I mean, if they're, they're probably in lots of old infrastructure that's, that's floating around. I can't imagine how many there are. I don't even know the number. But I wonder uh, who's going to audit that. Who's nobody. Who's going to go around figuring nobody. that out? Anyway. somebody's going to have to go inspect everything and see if there's lead pipes. That could be a good job. Anyway, <laughs> uh, as we talked about earlier, the stock market has on a, been on a tear uh, the last couple of uh, weeks, and, and especially this last week. And this is why there's, there's a lot of uh, money that's going to be hitting the streets. And it's uh, hopefully you're going to be out there to take advantage of some of this stuff. Uh, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce strongly criticized the post tax hikes, um, which is how they're going to try to fund this because it's going to hurt the businesses that, that they're trying to help. But that came directly from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Right. So what else you got, Sherry? Anyways, I'm going to burn out on this. Yeah, me too. Uh, so this eviction ban. So the CDC has extended its eviction ban for people who rent through June 30th. And on top of that, You've got $45 billion in rental assistance that's soon going to be available. So what I'm reading makes me believe that people who are not have not paid their rent for the last year are going to get money to pay back the rent, and it's going to go directly to the landlord. And they will have just not paid their rent because they chose to because they could. I, I just don't understand this. this. We have gone off the rails in this country when it comes to just spending money. And it's all... To me about buying votes that's what all this is about and it's about people who sit home on unemployment all week long they work two days like i talked about last week work two days get full unemployment plus the extra 300 bucks haven't been paying the rent now the government's going to repay the rent that they haven't paid for the last year this is not what this country is about i'm sorry i need to get off the subject because yeah, it, it's you're, just you're, annoying and and stupid and you don't need to hear about it because it's just going to upset you there you Anyways, go uh, we need to change subjects. Let's All get right. on to something else. Why don't you talk about the vaccine? Hmm. Or here, do this. So we have a really great report on our website, Can I Afford to Retire? And it walks you through how, all the steps you need to take. Basically, it walks you through what I do when I meet with people for an appointment. Uh, because we have people fill out a form ahead of time with their income, their assets, their questions, 
uh, what's their income going to be, what's their income now, what's their income going to be in retirement, Social Security projection, all that kind of stuff. And they bring that to the appointment and we talk through how realistic it is for them to be able to retire at whatever age they plan. And I had two couples come in this week that had done all the work. They just needed to show it to somebody and get a, an opinion. Like, are we really good to go? Is this going to be okay? And they have done everything right. It was perfectly fantastic. They've saved enough. They've got their projections and they're going to, and they're debt free and they're going to flow right into retirement without a hitch. Um, now are, are, are the clients, are they, the norm or are they the not outliers the the outliers yeah most people that come see us really are organized and have it all together i've only had a handful of people honestly that i had to say you have to keep working you cannot retire mm -hmm. you've got to pay off debt i mean that's usually the biggest thing is there's a, a big debt payment that, that is just not going to work the numbers aren't going to work and what we typically use is a four percent distribution rate out of their retirement assets and so if you can take your social security your pension whatever other income you have and add a four percent distribution to that and the numbers work because you've paid off your debt and and all that that's the norm yeah now the only real struggle that people have is where do they want to live when they retire that is a huge problem big deal because their house might be too big their land might be too much maintenance wise and they struggle with do i stay here or do i downsize and then sometimes they'll have i had one couple the wife wanted to go to the beach and live at the beach the husband wanted to live in the mountains <laughs> and so i said you got to figure this out you can't just pull the trigger and retire and have been buy two new places right and sell your property and now you have two mortgages i mean that's not going to work yeah and you know one of the things is in this report is uh it's i think it's probably that there's eight items that if you're if you're doing this that you're probably not going to have a great retirement is, is you go into your last five years before retirement with a mortgage because that is a big expense it's uh, a big deal and if you have to go buy two houses to satisfy your your needs then you're going to be in even worse shape and i've had people that bought a beach house and in two years they sold it because right. they were sick of the beach well you know they were of, sick of looking at the same thing every day and they'd rather be in the woods right well i know people who have purchased those and that they've sold them because they just didn't like the drive right you know like going down to destin or you know, like maybe just get at marriott points and go stay at a marriott for a week and yeah. see how much you like the beach <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> if you get sick of it after a week and the, so it says here are the eight signs that you could run out of money this is in a special report that we just mentioned it's on our website can i afford to retire so number one you have a mortgage with more than five years to pay off number two you're supporting other family members which is very common mm -hmm. huge these days um, three you haven't saved very much money for retirement four you're unprepared when an emergency happens five you and your spouse disagree on spending and saving which is a big problem six your spouse opts out of survivor benefits i need to come back to that one seven you ignore the chance that you could need long-term care eight you take financial advice from friends and co-workers uh you know sherry this one of the minute. ones that you mentioned oh. er, mentioned earlier is supporting relatives and uh, i think see i think ct's choking on a <laughs> microphone or something you know uh, anyway uh supporting relatives that we've had many cases where a relative gets in you know their, their spouse dies or they receive an inheritance from from somebody and everyone in their family comes out of the woodwork and asks for a part of that money this is particularly true with widows yeah a woman inherits a bunch of money and the whole family thinks they should get a piece of it and i tell them do not give anybody a dime for a year sit on this money let's make sure that you understand what your budget is and what your bills are especially if the husband was paying all the bills all this time make sure that you're safe and you're comfortable and that you're set up for retirement success before you give anything away yep yeah that's big and you were going to come back to something on that report survivor benefits yes so fortunately most people that come to see me go online ssa.gov and they look at their projection for Social Security and they're working longer so their benefit is larger and we mentioned this before but every year that you wait to take Social Security up to age 70 your benefit grows by 8% so it's a really big deal so how this works with survivor benefits um, is when you when you become full retirement age if your spouse has passed you can get a hundred percent of their benefit 
It's a big deal to coordinate Social Security and to understand how this works and to make sure that you wait and that you take it at the most optimal time. Because taking it early, just because you think it's going broke, is not a good plan. Well, you're talking about the Social Security side of it, but you think about the people who retire from the military the or, yes. or any other place where they are offered survivor benefits and they choose not to include their spouse on that because they want their income to be just a little higher. A couple hundred dollars a month more. Yeah. and I've seen cases of people that's only $200 a month that's more right. to take their own instead of giving the spouse the 50% option. That's right. I don't understand understand that yeah because there's no you can't plan on being alive you have no idea if you're gonna be alive and if you're a guy and you know you're gonna drop dead sooner by statistically speaking uh, before your spouse if you're then, way older than yeah, her yeah then you know you really want to think twice about doing something that's that selfish I guess it's the right word you know you're thinking about your your own money coming in and versus the support the long-term care of that person of course you may have millions of dollars in the bank and there's a reason you're doing it but just take a good look at it and don't don't uh don't just look at it from your perspective look at it from the, the surviving bit of uh, the surviving spouse and i have clients that both took 100 percent of their own pension because they each had a pension and that's fine because with their remaining pension they're going to be just fine they didn't have to do the survivor because their pensions yeah. were so big yep. so it's all about the numbers so you have to do the math and, and look, you have to know what your expenses are every month and if you haven't done it recently just track it, get out a notepad, it's beginning of April, and just write a list. Keep the notepad out on the kitchen counter where you're gonna see it every day, and every day write exactly how much you've spent that day. Meals out, gas, groceries, bills, all of that stuff. And um, in fact, in this report, there's actually a spending tracker, and this is the, can I afford to retire? It's on one. It's a page in here. It's a spending tracker that has groceries, meals out, snacks, fuel, daycare, credit card, blah, 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 charity, everything. And you just write down what you spent every day. And at the end of the month, you add it up and take a look at where you're spending money. And are you spending money in the best way possible? Uh, there are people I've talked to who have done this and didn't realize how much they were eating out and how much they were spending. That's right. And they're shocked. You know, there's one other piece of this. Uh, can I afford to retire is, is a lot of folks they'll go out online and they'll get a financial calculator the, the one that provides projections on where they're mm -hmm. going to be and they're doing this basically taking a look at their 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 investments and because they know what their social security is going to be hopefully they know what their, you know, Pension. their pensions and, and all that stuff is but they want to say uh okay i'm going to take four percent out of my retirement which is getting to be an obsolete number anymore um uh, but when you start putting things you know your your projections into these calculators you've got to be very cautious because you know a lot of folks they, they want to go out and they say, i'm going to make 10 percent return on my investments and yeah, that's you just, can't base it on that that's just not realistic and uh because you know you have a couple of bad years in there and you know you may be putting yourself in in harm's way basically so what you have to do is understand there's facts and feelings when it comes to that's a to, good one facts and feelings facts and feelings uh, you have to understand that those two things really are important for you to understand when you're looking at these calculations and these projections because if you put in feelings and put 10 percent ah, return that's really good ver versus putting in four percent which is more of a, a factual number then things are going to be dramatically different in the in the output of that report so uh just be cautious when you go out to these the, the calculators and, and here's, let me throw use, in a point use, just use good common sense on it here's my here's a point so just because you want to take X dollars amount because you want to spend that doesn't mean that that is going to work out. You cannot just do it based on what you want. I had one of those in 2008. I had people that wanted to take out X dollars even though they didn't need it. They did not need it, but they wanted to spend it. They wanted to buy stuff, spend stuff on the grandkids. We're in a recession. We were in a recession. I'm like, you can't keep spending this much money and taking this much money out because the market is down. And they wouldn't, they could not listen to me. They wouldn't hear me. They got mad and um, they left and I don't know where they went. But it's like I couldn't talk sense into them because they were so obsessed with spending a certain amount of money a month, even though they didn't need to. And, you know, that's, that's crazy. That's the advantage, really, of having a, um, a good financial advisor, someone who can at least put a little, um, not sanity, but a little 
uh, focus. Different, focus a different perspective on things. You know, and some people are going to get mad if you're if we're honest with them, but that's just the way it's it an is. Outlier it's an outlier event, though. That's very rare that that happens, but, but it just upset me terribly yeah. because I couldn't stop them from spending. They but would it, not stop. But anyway, that's what we do. I mean, that's at Rosenberg Financial Group. We provide investment advice. We do active portfolio management. So you invest your money with us. We put it into a, a, a model, and we watch watch things daily. And if you when we come in for you come in for quarterly visits, and we go over everything. We talk to you about the family, the uh, major life event changes for you, beneficiaries, and wills, powers everything. of attorney, the whole nine. We help you get things lined up so when something bad does happen, then you're going to be better protected. Yep. So take a look at us on retirelax.com, and you can call us at four seven eight. 922-8100. Complimentary consultations Complimentary all consul day long. That's right. And it's not a trick. It's not a trick, really. <laughs> uh, so, well. oh, CT, you hold up the one-minute finger <laughs> twice now, okay? <laughs> oh, my <sighs> gosh. But, yeah, go to our website, retirerelax.com. There's tons of great special reports there. You can learn about Social Security and how to get your uh, statement and all of that kind of stuff. And... Vaccine, let me see, whatever. Oh, now he's telling me speed up? Nope. Yeah. All right, guys, y'all have a great weekend. It's been nice being with you. Thanks for listening. The views expressed on the show should not be construed directly or indirectly as an offer to buy or sell any securities or services mentioned herein. Investing is subject to risk, including loss of principal invested. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. No strategy can assure a profit nor protect against loss. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should only be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Securities are offered through Royal Alliance Associates Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Advisory services are offered through Rosenberg Financial Group, a registered investor advisor not affiliated with Royal Alliance Associates Incorporated. Offices are located at 2517 Moody Road, Warner Robins, and 4875 Riverside Drive, Suite 201 in Macon. Phone numbers are 922-8100 and 741-4457.